Hey everyone, and welcome back again to Let's Play Together. I am now officially, this is technically the second time, so now we're officially best frenemies. I hope you guys know that. So today we have a special guest. We have Zamboni Jones, who is also a uh, radio producer on WBCA 102.9 FM, Boston. Uh, and I'm so excited to have him. He was Thanks. one of the first people I had on my podcast. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, you can find it on Spotify, obviously WBCA 102.9 FM Boston uh, on Thursdays at 9 p.m. And you can find Zamboni Jones's, uh, he's one third of the host, but you can find, I'll just give you ownership since you're here. <laughs> you can listen to his podcast or radio show, I should say rather, uh, on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Yes. And it's titled uh, Boston Black and Gold. It's Bean Town Black and Bean Gold. Bean Town Black and Gold. So I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of hobbies and one of them is hockey. I love hockey. Mm. So we do a Bruins slash NHL show mm. Thursday, 7 p.m. WBCA, 102.9 FM, great radio station, doing awesome things for the community. So that was a fun show. We have a lot of fun on that show. We joke around a lot, obviously talk about news and current events mm. in the sports world and just in general and a lot of Bruins news. I, I enjoyed having you on, and I had you on because, you know, we're – I wouldn't say tight. We're acquaintances. We work together. We see each other a lot. And so yeah. uh, when you were, when I started doing my podcast, you were one of the first people to be like, hey, you know, Magic the Gathering is a really great game, you know, because I was talking about analog games versus video games. You were like, I've been playing MGT for forever, and it's really great. And so I had you on, and it was so much fun. And so I'm glad that we could play today because I'm sure there are a lot of people uh, out there in TV land and, you know, internet land who have never even heard of MGG or never played it or have no idea about it. So can you just give us, like, a brief rundown? Actually, sorry, I should, <laughs> I should roll this back, right? Right? Because we are doing social distancing. That's why we're doing Let's Play Together. Uh, we are not technically six feet apart, but you know we're pretty far apart. But I hope you guys are using your protection. This is my, I got this at Comic Con, guys. But I hope you're using your face mask. And you know we have some, some hand sanitizer here. Oh, it's good. I'm going to go yeah. for some here. Yeah. So we're going to protect ourselves and as best we can. May I suggest gloves, perhaps? Because mm -hmm. there's, mm -hmm. um, there'll be instances in which you have to touch someone else's cards. Mm -hmm. So gloves would be a good idea as well. So if you're playing at home, if you're going to be like learning or whatever, you know, get your little notepad to write, you know, notes down. I would consider Brett an expert because, I mean, Zamboni an expert I because don't know about I, expert. I know him. <laughs> and so he, he initiated me into this. So I am not, I'm not anywhere near. I'm like a first level noob. So don't judge me. We're frenemies. You should be, you should be on my side. Um, so let's start. So what's the first thing we need to do? Well, before, well, some background. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, <laughs> but I have been playing for a really long time, and I've seen the evolution of this game. Um, for, do you, you remember Pokemon cards, right? Oh, yeah, of course. This yeah. is like the adult version of Pokemon cards. It's way more, it's like, one of the best ways I always describe magic to someone is like super chess. Since it's, the strategy is endless, and you can really get really smart with the strategy, and the game can be really riveting. And uh, as I've said on your podcast, one of the reasons why I love it is because outside, when you're playing casually with friends, it never seems to be the same game twice, mm. unless you're playing like um, really meta game decks, which are popular in tournament. But um, throughout our um, game here today, we today we could talk about all that stuff. Yes. So we have. Um, I don't know where to begin. There's a lot. So to what talk style? About. We're going to be playing standard? Yes, yeah, so we today, we're going to play a casual game of standard. There's typically the three most popular formats, typically standard, modern, um, legacy. There's vintage two. Standard is, I believe, the three or four past sets, the most recent three or four past sets. And then modern extends to about eighth or, eighth or ninth edition, I believe. Um, they release about three or four sets a year. Um, I should probably be more privy to that knowledge. I'm gonna um, a good example is like I'm a bi I'm a huge fan of bands, but I don't like fanboy over certain bands when I really like them. I kind of just like appreciate them for their musical aspects. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Magic. Like I don't super fanboy over Magic, but I do. I mean, I play it a lot. I have a lot of friends that play it. I keeps mean, this is a safe it keeps space. me sharp. No, we're not gonna judge you. <laughs> we're frenemies. We're all frenemies here. And just if from you do, it's fine. and just from <laughs> playing for so long, I mean, you do learn a lot of things that way. And I must say too that the storyline is also super amazing and um, vast storyline. Anyway, so today we're gonna play like a ca very casual um, style of like standard, maybe a little fringe modern in there. 
So most of our cards should be from the last three or four sets, if not probably within the last five sets. Hmm. So this is casual, so it shouldn't be a big deal. The f so you want to have a 60 card deck. Um, you can look up a lot of places online on how to make a deck. Typically you want a deck with, um, depending on your mana curve, 19 to 24, 19 to 25 lands, and then in between that, uh, 20 or so creatures, 20 or so spells. We'll get to all of that today. The very important part, I think we're, so we're going to play a game yeah. right now because that's the easiest way to kind of just, to just go through the motions of how to do this, I believe. And then any questions we have going through this, um, we can address. Hmm. Um, we've already played once before. Yeah. And um, the way we played then is we played with both of our hands revealed, which was um, cool. The way when I first start playing with someone, I want, I kind of want them to feel good about it, so I want them to win. Mm -hmm. So I have us both play with our hands revealed just so I can, like, help you to win and kind of, like, um, pick out, like, make you aware of things ahead of time before you make the mistakes. Mm -hmm. Today, however, we'll play with our hands concealed okay. as, as normal, and we'll go through the motions. I'll go first just so I can um, explain, go through the phases of the turn. So the turn is broken into pieces, which we will talk about. And there are some instances where s cards can be played at once. So then um, there is an order um, when you play cards at once or like um, in very rapid succession, there is an order called a stack that you have to adhere to. And that depends on the, con the text of the actual cards themselves. Overall, in Magic the Gathering, it is actually very simple. You literally do just do what the cards say or what mm -hmm. the cards mm -hmm. tell you to do. Mm -hmm. But with that in mind, there are um, rules to remember um, a, like uh, in terms of the turn, how the turns go and what you can and can't do during some parts of the turns and etc. We'll get into all of that. Mm -hmm. So what the very f one very important thing about uh, Magic is you want your deck to be as randomized as possible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. shuffling is very important in Magic. You want to spend time practicing how to shuffle. The, the way that when I first just pull my deck out of my box, what I usually do casually is I'll make I'll do like a pile shuffle. And I'll, and this also helps you count your cards to make sure that you have 60 cards in your deck. So I'm just going to make six piles on a pile shuffle. This will um, help to super randomize. So this is the first half of my shuffling technique. I know of people that are like way faster with it and way cooler with it than I am. And I was going to say, but I am not a shuffling expert. <laughs> Uh, and also, uh, you know, shuffling kind of the novice way by just breaking the deck in half and then shoving the cards in between each other is kind of what, uh, you know, card protectors exist because if you do that with your cards, yeah, you that's will the reason, strip them. That's the reason why you want sleeves. So a big reason why you want sleeves is so you don't ruin your cards and you're shuffling because there's going to be a lot of shuffling in Magic. There's a lot of on the cards it says to shuffle your deck, um, stuff like that. So you want to protect your cards. Also, it makes it way easier to shuffle when you have these sleeves on. It's like way slipperier. And you also want to prevent people from cheating by marking the back of their cards. Mm -hmm. So a sleeve is a good way to prevent that as well. I'm going to pick up my cards. That's what I do for the first half of my shuffling. For the second half of my shuffling, I do like a lame mash where I just kind of split the deck and yeah. <laughs> mash them into each other. Mm -hmm. um, uh, everyone has their own kind of way of doing it. But try to. I've watched a few videos online where they go through several um, different ways to shuffle and which ways are the best. I do know that mashing them is the most effective, I'm not mashing them, pile shuffling mm -hmm. is one of the most effective ways to shuffle them, but typically in tournaments it takes too long to do that, mm -hmm. and it kinda, um, there are ways that you can easily cheat with pile shuffling any too. Mm -hmm. um, so, you mean they when you like watch the tournaments they'll do like a mash or they'll have, you'll see some interesting shuffling. They don't, they don't have like the casino style uh, car shufflers? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think, especially do with it. sleeves, I don't, I don't suggest that. I think you could ruin the cards that way mm -hmm. too. So give it a good shuff mm -hmm. and then you can draw seven cards. You're gonna, your opening hand will have seven cards. So today you're playing a mono green Vivian Planeswalker deck, yep. which is a good beginner's deck. So I'm going to be playing a Jund Food Sacrifice deck towards the top of the metagame, or was at the top of the metagame. 
tournament or so ago. Kind of my own spin on it because I can't afford the expensive lands. So I drew seven cards and I don't yeah. like them, so I can pick you another seven cards. You have a chance to mulligan. So if you opening your drawing hand of seven cards, you can look at them and you don't have a lot of lands or you don't just don't like what you got there. You have the option to mulligan, which is you shuffle again and you draw okay. seven cards. So there's the London mulligan. The regular mulligan is you would you don't like your seven cards, you shuffle again and then you you only draw six. A London mulligan is where you would draw seven again and then choose one to go at the bottom of your library. In casual, what we always do mm -hmm. is just let people get a free mulligan at the uh, their first mulligan is free and then from there you would do you would start London mulligan. -y. And a lot of times, typically, too, in like a, a kind of casual tournaments, even casual plays, like you'll have the other person split your deck when you're done shuffling. So you just split it and put it back together in any, any goofy way. I've seen people do like goofy things and like some mad scientist stuff, but I don't think that really matters. So I'm going to draw seven. I'm going to take a look at my hand. What I'm looking for is. I want to have enough land and say for example I have a two color deck I want to look at and make sure I have some kind of good start mana wise mm -hmm. so mana is, a, mana is the land that you play to execute cards or cast cards we'll get into stuff like that though so I think that and I'll drop my poker face for this game because there are, you can kind of get pokery with it. And in uh, tournaments, they definitely do to kind of like trick their opponents, feign plays and stuff. Yeah, but when you play cards, you're playing the player, not the yeah. cards. I mean, and that's why I like it's both. That's <laughs> why I like the actual tabletop more than Arena. Because the MTG Arena, the online mm -hmm. version, is really cool. It's mm -hmm. really good what they've done with it. But I mean, you're losing the social aspect. Yeah. So when you first um, told me about MTG, I was like, oh, I'll, like, I'll check it out. And I found out that about you know, MTG Arena. And so I started playing on that. And I was like, uh, like yeah, this is fun. Like, I get it. And then when like we played, I was like, oh, this is much better. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. also learn more when it's face to face. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, th the uh, computer version seems to do a lot for you as in terms of like yeah. untapping lands and remembering triggers and stuff, which can be good, but can also take you out of like really learning mm -hmm. how to play. Yeah, like highlights cards that you can use and everything. It like yeah, it does a lot. <laughs> do things for you. I think it's harder to. I think it's harder to learn that way mm -hmm. than from someone that plays regularly. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's start this game. I like my hand. I'm going to keep my hand. I'm going to go first. So on the first turn, the first part of the turn is called the upkeep. And the, during the upkeep, you will untap whatever you have used in your previous in the previous turns and you will draw a card. Since I go first in a two-person game, the first player does not draw a card on the first turn. Um, in a multiplayer game, so you could play this game with as many people as you want, mm -hmm. and there are different um, fun formats to play that we don't have to get into today. Um, in a multiplayer game, everyone draws first on the first turn. The f so then after your upkeep, which I couldn't do anything, I have no lands, on, I um, can draw. I'm going to go to my first main phase of my turn. So at the beginning of my first main phase, I will play a land. So in your main phase, you can do a few things. You could play a land. You can play however many spells you need to. You can play abilities, um, what have you. So I'm just thinking about what I want to play for a land. So I'm going to play my land. This is still my main phase. To pay for a card that I want to play, I'm going to tap this land. So tapping means that you're using it. So you turn it sideways. And I'm going to play a creature, which is called the Gilded Goose. So the Gilded Goose, for its abilities, it has flying. It has an ability that says when it enters the battlefield, I get to create a food token. So I'm You'll have some cards that create tokens. Token is just in like an like a 
placeholder? Yeah, kind of. Or like you can have token creatures, which are like it's a creature with a power and toughness, but it's not like a card. It's just like a token that you materialize per se. So I'm going to materialize this food. I have one food there. And the food has the ability where I could tap two things of any color and tap this and I could sack it and I can gain three life. But in this deck, this food's going to bounce off in other ways more effectively than its ability on its own. The Gilded Goose also has the ability of I can tap one and a forest to tap it and create another food token. And I can tap him to sacrifice a food to add one mana of any color. So when you tap a land, I'm gonna, when I tap this forest, it produces a green mana. If I had another land like a swamp and I went to tap it, it would produce a black mana. And that's how you pay for things. That's like your, how you pay for things in magic to, mm. to be able to play things. So that was my, and you could tap this for mana at any time because there are cards that you could play instantly mm -hmm. during other people's turns and such. Usually cards will let you know if they can operate at instant speed. So I have this food token, I have this Gilded Goose. That's my main phase since I have nothing else I can do. I'm going to go to combat. My Gilded Goose has a zero attack power and a two toughness. Zero attack power I can't deal you any damage with so it's useless for me to attack. Also I can't attack because he just came out this turn so he has summoning sickness. So the only instance in which a creature can attack right when he comes out is if he has the ability haste. Haste gives the creature the ability to tap on the same turn that he comes out. Creatures will either say that they have haste on them or you could have a, another card that gives all your creatures haste. However it gets haste, that is the only instance in which it can tap um, when it first comes out. So that was my main phase. That's everything I did in my main phase. We're going to go to a combat. I can't attack with him. He just came out. I'm going to end my combat phase. I'm going to go to my second main phase. My second main phase is just like my main main, my first main phase where I could do the same things. I could play a land. I could play a creature. I could play a sorcery. I could play an artifact or whatever, what have you. You can only play one land a turn, however. So if you already played a land in your first main phase, you can't play a land in your second main phase. Hmm. That said, play your land wisely. There are some instances in which you don't want to play a land in your first main phase and would rather play it in your second main phase because you're brewing up a scheme, a, like a scheme or a strategy to either trick your opponent or some, uh, something else that's going to help you on your board state, etc. Don't do anything in my second main phase. I can't do anything. I'm tapped out. He can't. He, it's already past my combat phase. I can't use his abilities because he can't tap. Um, artifacts. So this is a token artifact. Artifacts don't succumb to summoning sickness. So if I played an artifact, um, it's not a creature and it has an ability for tapping, I could tap it right away as soon as I put it out. But I'm not going to use this. I can't pay for it anyway to be able to use its ability, so I will not. Then comes my end step. So I have to notify you that's my end step because at my end step you could, you could still instantly want to do something during your turn. Um, anything that I want to finish up on my turn is probably the best way to explain it. Um, there are cards that say um, at the beginning of your end step, so that is the final phase of your turn. Mm. And then I'm going to say pass my turn. It's going to go to your upkeep. So on your upkeep now, on your turn, you would untap it, any cards that you had tapped from last turn, unless they say not to or something, and you would draw a card. So let's, you can draw a card now. It's your turn. Also, we failed to mention with the phone is here signifying our life totals. So the way that you win magic is you, like, Ashley has, or Hunt, <laughs> it's cool. she has her life total of 20, and I have a life total of 20, and the object of the game is she's a wizard and I'm a wizard, basically, and we're, or we're planeswalkers, and we're trying to kill each other. Mm -hmm. And we can attack each other, we could deal each other damage, um, we could attack each other's each other with creatures and our tr creatures can block each other cre each other's creatures we'll get into that stuff though so now you drew a card yep. we're going to go into your main phase yep, so i'm going to play my land yes and i do not have a creature i can uh tap with that uh so that's my main phase and actually so yeah. So in main phase, you play that land. Mm -hmm. You can't play anything else mm -hmm. with that one land. You play, you're going to go to combat. You're going to skip your combat. Yep. 
you're going to go to your next main phase, you still can't play anything, and your end step, nothing happens, so you're going to pass it back to myself. Okay. Guess to my turn, my upkeep, I'm going to untap my land. I use last turn. I'm going to draw a card. Thus begins my main phase. So my main phase, I'm just kind of taking a second here to think about what I want to do. I'm probably going to play a land. It would be to my advantage. It would be to my advantage now since I don't have any cards that are of two mana cost, which I shouldn't be telling you this. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this just kind of clear some things up. It would be to my advantage to play like a tapped land, a land that comes in tapped now when I don't have to use it. So I'm going to play Bloodfell Caves. It enters the battlefield tapped, which it says. And then when it enters the battlefield, I gain a life. So I'll gain a life. And this one says when I tap it, I could add a swamp or a mountain, a black or a red mana. That stays tapped. Still my main phase. I'm going to tap the forest for a witch's oven. And... With the Witch's Oven, I can tap it to sacrifice a creature of my own. And in doing so, I create a food token, another one of these bad Larrys. If the sacrifice creature's toughness was four or greater, create two of these bad Larrys instead. I'm still in my main phase, debating right now if I want to use this. I don't think that I do. I'm going to go to combat. I can't really attack with anything. I'll go to my second main phase. I can't play anything. I'll go to my end step. Nothing resolves or anything like that and we'll pass to your turn. Sweet. So, it, so it's your upkeep. You drew a card. Yep. You would untap things but you have nothing to untap. Nope. So. so I'm going to play my land. Mm -hmm. Start in my main phase. Uh, go to the attack phase. I you don't have anything. It's still your main phase, Sorry. so you, you have nothing to play during your main, your main phase. phase. Exactly. Skip your combat, skip your second main phase, and now it's end step, you. my turn. Uh, beginning of my upkeep, I will untap my lands. I'll draw a card. Hmm. I'm in my main phase, debating what I want to do here. I think I'm going to slow it down for you a little and let you get some ground. Well, the thing <laughs> is that I like my shuffle was so bad because I'm just I just keep picking up lands. Yeah, when you sh <laughs> like I was saying at the beginning of the show, the shuffling really does matter. You you'll re I realize that cuz I used to shuffle really bad mm -hmm. and I would get screwed like so much. I don't you know if I could say that. Like, I would always get like a bad draw and then someone was explaining to me the probabilities of shuffling and whatnot. Mm. And uh, I changed my habits since then. I re It made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yeah, because, m well, not half, but close to half your deck are, are, is made up of lands anyway, right? So the odd that you No, like a third, a around third. about a third of your mm. deck. Because you're 19, 20 cards. Okay, so 19 to 25. I mean, you can have as many as you want mm. in there. It just depends on what your strategy mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess you could have a strategy where you... It's just a deck full of mostly lands and then sorceries or enchantment to creatures that are planeswalkers that turn all your lands into creatures. Mm. I mean, yeah. I've seen that before. It's not too far-fetched. So that's one of the things <laughs> I like about this, that they're, it's really versatile and there's a lot of different ways to play. Yeah. And I was talking to some other um, people who play MTG and they were talking about how like they make like quirky decks. Like yeah. someone make, made a deck of just, just cards just that cause. had chairs <laughs> in it and I, in, yeah. in the artwork. And I was like, how many artworks have tears in them? You'd be surprised. Yeah, there's over 20,000 cards at this oh point, God, I believe. So, so, so many possibilities, honestly. Yeah. Continuing, yes. it's still my first main phase. I'm going to just play another, I'm going to slow it down here. I'm going to let off the throttle of the Harley. I'm going to play this tapped Guild Gates. This time I do not gain a life. I'm going to tap, still in my main phase, I'm going to tap two to tap this Guild of Goose to create another food token. So you can note that by grabbing another food token. Another good way to note that. It's just very handy to have dice when playing Magic. 
is just to use a dice. So now I have two food tokens. Um, go to my combat. I have nothing to attack with. I go to my mi I, uh, second main phase. I could use this to sack this, get another food. I'm not really itching for it right now, so I'm not going to do that. I could also do this during your turn if I wanted to. Um, abilities um, can be used as an instance unless otherwise noted. So if I really wanted to do that, I could do that whenever I wanted to. Skip the second main phase, go to my end step, nothing resolves or happens or initiates. Go to your turn. Okay. So your upkeep, you draw a card, right. you have nothing to untap. How many nope. cards do you have in your hand? Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. Because you're only s at the end of your turn, you're supposed to have seven uh, or less cards. Yep. Uh, so. Uh, Go to your main phase. Yep. Uh, I have nothing to play. You still have nothing to I play. Yeah, I just keep picking up lands. Um, or you have <laughs> something that's really expensive in your card. Yes. Like really high mana cost. Yeah. yeah. So when you're making your decks, you always kind of want to. You don't want to stuff your decks with like um, huge mana cost creatures that are slow to get out. You kind of want to yeah. ramp up. So this was one of the, the pre-built decks that they, yeah. they suggested, uh, which was gifted to me by Zamboni. Uh, and <laughs> it's just easy to start off with and get it is. the concept. And it's pretty well balanced. Like, there's not a whole lot of high, like, cost cards. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, like, I shuffled badly. Remember, guys, rule number one, <laughs> shuffle. Shuffle really well because I have nothing yeah, to play. You're seeing and the detriment of a bad shuffle. Learn um. from me, guys. Okay, so uh, I have no cards to play uh, in my main phase, and so my battle phase, attack phase, is yeah. moot, and then... You could just pass the yes. turn after the main phase. I just wanted it so uh, for viewers to kind of... Because that's what's on one of the, the things that's very important about this game is understanding how the turns work and uh, the stack works if you play several cards. So, like, uh, if I had an instant, I can play that any time yes. during my turn or your turn. Correct. So, stuff like... Yeah, okay, okay. Um, and, like, a deck... Like, um, one of the reasons why that's an easier deck for a beginner because it doesn't have a lot of cards that... Um, interact with each other like a super lot. It doesn't have like a lot of card text or uh, triggers. Mm -hmm. A trigger is like when I, a card will say when you play something this happens yeah. or whenever you do this this happens. And this deck is like a, it's like a harder to play because there's so many triggers to keep up with and there's so many different routes of minute routes of strategy that you could take to, to win. Mm -hmm. So it does take like a more um, experienced Rider. Yeah. To well, so I know that, like, I, this eagle griffin thing. It's a goose. Goose. It's oh, a it's gilded goose. goose. A gilded goose came <laughs> out, and it has flying, and so that means that, like, if I have a monster, I can't, well, I can't attack, but there are cards that can help it attack, like, give it a. a so if, I, if a creature has flying, it can only be blocked by another, another creature, creature that is flying. flying. So and it doesn't essentially have an, fly over it. Doesn't it ha has toughness, but doesn't have uh, any attack power, but there yeah, are so cards it, that could give it. Oh attack yeah. Power, so I'm like, oh no. You oh, can no. give a card that makes it plus one attack, plus one toughness until end of turn, etc. There's so many things that yes. like that. For the utility of what I'm using it for right now is just to pop out food for me. Mm -hmm. I'm eating. I'm eating like golden geese legs oh, for like <laughs> for like dinner it's every night so over fast. here. Poor goose. <laughs> yeah, it's super fun to actually like when you play with your friends. It's fun to like joke about the the thing like the cards and the, the fantasy topics that come up. Anyway, you went, you passed your turn. I did. Uh, I don't know if we're even going to get to finish this oh game boy. in this, but we could uh, continue. Well, we can we can play again. I mean, yeah. we have nothing but time, <laughs> most of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go to my turn, my upkeep, untap the lands, the Gilded Goose, draw a card. I'm going to play a Swamp. It is my main phase. Not giving me much of a choice over here. Oh, that means he has a card that's just gonna go for the regular. <laughs> it's gonna like take ten hit points right off the bat. It's like, oh, sorry. No, it's kind of <laughs> waiting for you to do things. Since we're playing casually, can I just shuffle my deck again? <laughs> <laughs> just gonna shuffle this. Little, I don't know what well, you probably have like good cards <sighs> waiting for you finally. I don't trust this deck <laughs> anymore. It's, it's lost my faith. It's, typically, <laughs> it's not allowed. You get one cheap point though. Yay! Thank you. In this game. Good. I gotta get in the game. Gotta get in the game. <laughs> All 
right, I'm going to just tap two for a trail of crumbs enchantment. So an, en an enchantment is a permanent that stays on the battlefield and has an effect when it comes into play, create another food token. So I'm sitting on food, I'm at a buffet right now. Whenever, and it reads, when it comes into play, create a food token. Whenever I sacrifice a food, I can pay one mana. If you do look at the top two cards of my library, I may reveal a permanent card from among those two cards and put it into my hand and put the rest, the other card, on the bottom of my library, library in any order. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I can... I'm going to tap two in my main phase. And I'll tell you why I shouldn't have done that right after I do it. I'm going to tap two in my main phase, sack one of these foods, and get rid of it so I can gain three life. Which I shouldn't have done. Because I don't have enough mana to pay for this ability, but that's okay. So the reason why I shouldn't have done that is because I wanted to use this ability and I was rushing in, I didn't realize I have a mana, I didn't have a mana left to play this ability and look at the top two cards. The other reason why I should have held off on that was I should have waited until your turn to do that and then drew a card during my turn. Because if I kept these two mana up, I can kind of make it seem like I could do something during your turn that could possibly mm. not be good for you. So mm -hmm. I'd be kind of poker facing it, mm. poker facing it and being like, you could be like, well, he has that two mana up over there. Can you do something if I do this? Mm -hmm. So that's one instance why you don't always want to play everything that you could play right away. Mm -hmm. kind of want to hold off sometimes. Um, that was a bad play on my part, but it's all good. Um, let's go to combat. I have nothing to attack with. He has zero power. Um, skip combat. Second phase, your turn. Oh, Upkeep. Draw. Sure. Okay. <coughs> Um, so I'm going to pass my turn again. You're going to pass your turn? Yeah, and I shuffled and still, and still. You're like two, man, you're like two forest mana away from like the Amazon. <laughs> um, but while we're talking about my crappy hand, so your hand, you have three cards in your hand. Are there any yes. rules about like having, wh what happens if you have no cards in your hand for whatever reason that might No, happen? that's called being overextended. So nothing, I mean the only bad part about it is that you just don't have any cards to play. So that so you only have the one card you pick up at the beginning of your turn. <sighs> yeah. But there are a lot of cards that help you to draw more cards mm -hmm. or generate other cards. So most of the time it is at your disadvantage to be overextended. Mm -hmm. And then the person across the table gets a little um, confident. And they're like, all right, he's overextended. I could probably put this away quick. Mm -hmm. That could also be used to your advantage sometimes when they're mm -hmm. not aware. And then you pick up something and you're like, wait, the game's not over. But typically it is bad to be overextended and not have cards in your hand because you don't have a way to deal with threats mm. that come about, mm. um, or a, at least not immediately. So, so you're going to pass your turn, correct? Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> or nothing's happened during this game yet. I promise everybody that this is way more it amusing. It is the first time we played. Dude, I've had some crazy showdowns. Like, like But it's the first time, you know, we're, we're just, you know, we're leading them into the really good stuff. I'm going to just, my engine's not really swooping off either. I'm going to tap three for a Mayhem Devil in my first main phase. So whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, it deals one damage to any target. No one's dealt anyone any damage this game yet. I can feel it. My next card. <laughs> Please play it. It'll be a creature. I'm gonna put that good juju out there. Uh, I'm gonna go to combat. He doesn't have haste, so I can't attack. Um, he's just a three-three on the ground. Um, whenever someone sacrifices a permanent, it deals one damage, and I could choose the target of that one damage. I'm not gonna use my artifact either in my second main phase. Uh, I'm gonna pass, and you can go to your upkeep. Okay. Is this the card, guys? Is this is this the card? Is this the creature? Oh, <laughs> oh, you haven't yet. Gosh, oh my God, it's the creature. <laughs> yes, so excited. <laughs> okay, so so play, play my win land. <laughs> You're gonna go to your main phase. Yep, and then I'm going to uh, tap these three here. Oh, 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 oh. 
I know, right? My first creature, ha! Okay, so I'm gonna cast uh, this uh, gnarled back rhino creature. Gnarled back rhino. That it sounds pretty gnarly. Uh, so that means that this creature can deal excess combat damage to the player's planeswalker, if or planeswalker. Is player or planeswalker. Player or planeswalker. So what Sorry. trample means is that you can your damage rolls over to whoever you're attacking. Mm -hmm. So um, a planeswalker is another type of card that you could play too. It's like having another player. Like that you're playing with, but it's a card. Mm -hmm. That's a different card type. Um, when you're attacking, you're typically attacking a planeswalker or you're attacking the player. What trample is, is say that you attacked me with that 4 4 at some point, and I came and I blocked with this Mayhem Devil. The Mayhem Devil has a 3 attack and a 3 toughness. The gnarl Gnarly Rhino, that's yeah. what I'm going to call it. <laughs> I always like giving like funny names. The, gnarl the Gnarly Rhino is a 4 4. So if I blocked him when he attacked, I would soak up three of his four attack because he has three toughness. Mm -hmm. The other one damage from the four would roll over and hit me um, or hit yeah. the planeswalker. Uh, and this also has uh, the added effect of whenever you cast a spell that targets Gnarlback, Rhino, uh, draw a card. That's so cool. if I wanted okay. to add an artifact or and use an instant on it. Yeah, so if you have a sorcery a or uh, an, uh, an equipment, there's a, there are equipment cards, which are artifacts, which is like you can attach swords to creatures and stuff. Um, anytime that you do something that affects him or targets him, because there's a difference between target and area effects, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, a more, um, that's a bigger topic. But anything that you target him with, you get to draw a card from doing so. Let's make a battlefield in here. Let's get our battlefield like over here, I mm -hmm. guess, right? Mm -hmm. Like a little back. Mm -hmm. All right. So then, it's still your first main phase. Um, yeah. Are you going to do anything else before you go to combat uh, phase? I will not. I will hold off. So I you go to combat. Yeah. You can't do anything in combat because he doesn't have haste. Summoning sickness. He has yeah. summoning sickness for this turn, correct? It's like tongue tied. So yeah. then you pass your combat phase. You go to your second main phase. Is there anything you want to do in your second there main phase? There is not. Um, you end step, nothing resolves or triggers. So then it goes to my upkeep. My upkeep, untap my stuff. Draw a card. Alright, this is going to be cool. I'm going to, in my main phase, I'm going to tap the Gilded Goose. I'm going to tap the Gilded Goose and sacrifice a food to add a mana of any color. I will add a red mana to my mana pool. So it's just kind of like an imaginary mana that's floating in the air. I don't have a card for it, mm -hmm. but it is there. Mm -hmm. So whenever you tap one of these, it adds the mana of the chosen color to your mm -hmm. mana pool. Mm -hmm. Your mana pool is like a pool of ethereal substance. <laughs> um, we're wizards, sorcerers, <laughs> yeah. planeswalkers. So, uh, I do that so I can get a red mana, and then I will add the rest of my mana to my mana pool for Corvald, Fey, Cursed King. He is a legendary creature, dragon, noble. Uh, pretty brutal. He is flying. Um, yeah. Whenever, so I had to sack that food. Remember I had to sack that food? So this is what I mean. There's a lot of triggers in this deck, so you got to keep up with it. I sack that food, so this should deal one damage to any targets. I'm going to deal the one damage to him. So now until the end of my turn, he's a 4-3. I mm -hmm. dealt him one damage for this turn. Um, so whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, I have to sacrifice another permanent. I will sacrifice this other food and deal the damage that bounces off of this from the sacrifice to this. So he's a 4-2 now. And then, and then, I will, so it's whenever I sacrifice a permanent, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. So you can mark plus one, plus one counters with just the uh, dice. Mm. So a plus one, plus one counter is sometimes it only lasts until the end of turn. Sometimes, in this case, it's permanent. Um, it, usually a counter is permanent unless it says otherwise, like an, until end of turn or whatever. So this is just giving him plus one power and plus one toughness. So now he's a 5-5 of flying. I'm going to swoop in on you soon and end this 
Oh, Charade. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's all my dad's when I play fault. With my friends, <laughs> when I play with my friends, we talk like aggressively. I, mean, I love that. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to be as polite to you as I possibly can. <laughs> I think that's like, that's part of the reason why like actual pl actually playing with people is good. Cause like I went to a play test for like yeah. analog games and like, I was like in my Uno, I was like, it's all in like, good oh, humor. Oh, so much fun, but I will get you. <laughs> it's all in good humor, dude. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, trash talking is like the best part. So I did that. It's still my main phase. Now he's a 5-5. Five five. I still haven't gone to combat yet. What else can I do here? What I really want to do is kill that thing. Oh boy. I don't know if I can. I have to figure out a way to deal it two more damage by sacrificing things. It seems the only way that I can sacrifice something is by tapping this to sack this, which would deal it one damage, but then I don't have the ability to sack something after that. So I messed up because the two damage that came from this I should have went straight to your head with, but I didn't. But I was just trying to find a way. So I could have thought that out more and took longer. I know we're trying to get through this a little faster because we're on a time restraint. But if I thought I took a little more time, I could have figured out probably a way to have played though all those cards in a way to have been able to deal that four damage with this thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to go to combat. I'm not going to attack. He can't attack. He just came out. If I attack with him, you're just going to block with him, and this thing would die, and it would be pointless. So I'm going to pat. I'm going to skip my combat, skip. I'm going to go to my second main phase. I don't really see anything for me. I'm going to end step. Nothing triggers. Nothing resolves, and pass to your turn. Cool. So all these lands untap. Uh, so when it becomes my turn, uh, after after your turn ends, yep. my creature heals back, right? Yes, yeah, so at the beginning of your upkeep, your creature goes back to being a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Cool. So the, um, yeah, it is turn. I'm pretty sure until the end of turn that the creature maintains its toughness, whatever happened to it. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to play another... Uh, land. So how many land do you have? In I have a six. Yeah, I have nice. so many. I have so, so, so many. some big boys gonna come out soon, right? Uh, not not on this show. Maybe the next show. <laughs> uh, so now I'm going to um, tap these two lands. I'm gonna play uh, Bark High Troll, and he gets a one one counter when he's my. Yeah, so he enters the battlefield with a one one counter on him. Sick. So he's a so three, he's three 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 troll. And he has so many successes. So he I has an ability that you can tap one, just mm -hmm. one mana, which is anytime an ability on a creature says tap one and not tap the creature itself, yeah. it's probably going to be a cool ability. Mm -hmm. Remove a 1-1 one, one counter from this troll. It gains hexproof until end of turn. Hexproof means that it can't be the target of a spell or ability. So if I had a card that would deal damage to him, like a sorcery mm -hmm, or a mm -hmm. spell that would yeah. deal damage to him, it wouldn't affect him. Or sorcery that exiled him or killed him or something, mm. um, it wouldn't affect him. Yeah. Anything that I played that said, like for example, destroy all creatures, it yeah. would hit him because hexproof is just protecting you from things that target him. Mm. So there's a few keywords in magic. One of the biggest keywords is target. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm not gonna sacrifice my one-one counter because yep. it doesn't seem like you have like a magic not magic or a sorcery heavy uh, deck like that's kind of what you're going for so i'm not going to sacrifice that um but i am going to move on to my um combat phase i'm going to attack with my uh gnarl gnarl back rhino nice. so i'm going to tap him and hit me for four now i have um the ability to block yep. um when you're blocking a creature you can block with as many creatures on your side so she's attacking i can block with these two creatures i could block with only one of them or i could eat the damage i'm just going to say this i have a five five and you're attacking with a four four are you sure you want to attack and have this just have that just get killed if you attack with a four four and i block with a five five that's just going to so die this isn't going to reap any consequences actually so instance can be played at any time yes yeah, so that's what I want to do. I'm going to tap these two lands. I'm going to play this growth cycle on Gnarlback, which makes it gives it 3-3 three, three until the end of my turn. So that makes it 7-7 four, four, seven, a seven, seven mm -hmm. creature attacking. Okay, cool. Okay, I so wasn't going to block with this when I said that, but oh. um, I feel bad, so I'm just going to block <laughs> with this. But um, if you don't block with your creatures, that means that I'm going to attack your... 
help. You're going to yeah. eat it. Yes. So you would you were attacking me in person. I might just take the damage, honestly. So I'm going to go. I'm going to eat it to the face and go down seven. Uh huh. Damage is dealt. No, sir. First blood. Correct. Yep. Okay. Math. I know, right? Oh, don't. <laughs> I count on my fingers, guys. Don't judge me. All right. Yes. Uh, so I'm at 17. And then that is your combat phase. Yes. And then you go to your second main phase. You still have open up. So you instantly used that. Mm -hmm. um, if I did, you should have waited to see if I were to block. What I was going to say is when you attacked, yeah. you should have waited to see if I would have blocked with this. And then after I assigned the blocker, then you could have played that instant and used mm -hmm. it to kill this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you could have played it anyway if I didn't block and dealt me, still dealt me seven Especially damage. because you're playing like that food token deck where you can regain your life. Yes. Oh, okay. And then this is you. So at the end of combat, I mean, it this goes, goes into, into your graveyard. graveyard. Yeah. Yep. It's the first thing to go into a graveyard. <laughs> so on your second main phase, you're not going to do anything? Nope, I'm not, and that ends my turn. But this also has the effect that when it goes into the graveyard, if I play yep. another one, yep. I get to add two two tokens. Mm -hmm. So it's that worth putting it effective. into my graveyard. Yeah, it's a great graveyard, card, yeah. honestly. So yeah, your graveyard is typically like on the other side of your deck or something. Mm. Yeah, just in the best of luck. Yeah. Um, so it's my turn, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Upkeep, untap my stuff. Jerkard. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. Um. My main phase. I'm going to tap three for a mur to send the murderous rider on an adventure. So adventure is a mechanic that was released in the Eldrain set. Um, a lot of sets have their own kind of like mechanics that expand the game, which are pretty cool. An adventure is. Um, I'm sending him on an adventure somewhere. So he's going to go do this adventure, and the adventure is called Swift, Swift End. <coughs> um, you can destroy a target creature or a planeswalker, and I also lose two life. I'm going to destroy that creature so it gets killed. Drive-by or something. It's probably a dr <laughs> it was a drive-by. It was a drive-by oh, spearing. Right. It was joust. Um, so this goes on an adventure, which it's exiled, but um, while it's on an adventure, I can play it from it for its regular mana cost mm -hmm. as a creature. Mm -hmm. So it's going to remain exiled. So there's a difference between something dying and it being exiled. Mm -hmm. Exiled is it kind of just goes into like the vacuum of space mm -hmm. until something happens to it again. Mm -hmm. Something may never happen to it, but there are cards that target cards in exile mm -hmm. and stuff. And it there can be brought back from exile. Yeah, like yeah. There, are, there are enchantments that say this enchantment will come down and the enchantment exiles something until the enchantment leaves the battlefield. Mm. So if you can destroy that, destroy that enchantment, the uh, card will come back that was enchanted to be exiled. My murderous rider is on an adventure. I will then tap the Rakdos Guildgate for a swamp for a cauldron familiar. It's a cat. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and I gain a life. So you lose a life, I gain a life. I need to end this quickly. Um, I'm going to go to, hmm. I'm just going to start swooping in. Oh gosh. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Attack with the Corvalds. Do so when I attack with them, I have to sack something. I'm gonna sack my Trail of Crumbs. It's not really doing me a lot, so I have to sack a permanent, and it gives him another counter. So he's a six-six flying. I'll swoop in with a six-six flying, and that's all for now. So that was my combat phase. So you hit for six, yep. and then. Um, Uh, 
We have five minutes left. I'm going to try to end this quick. Um, I'm going to tap this, sack my cat to create a food, because I can. Um, I'm going to sack this food to, this has a text, which I can sack a food to return this to the graveyard. Um, um, oh yeah, and also when I sacked the uh, thing from playing that, I'm going to deal that one damage. Oh. No, the counter stays on it. Oh. So it was a 2-2 two, so two now. Yeah, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that was a 2-2. Two, two. Sack the food. Oh, and then I sack this, so it deals another damage, and then sack the food to deal a 3 damage, so it kills it. Um. Bring this back, you also lose a life, and I gain a life. I don't know if I gain. I'm going to stay where I was, because I lost 2 life from this. Oh, what's when you sent it on? I think I should be at 17, honestly. Um, right. So you know what I mean? see what I mean? There's a lot of triggers to remember and stuff. Uh, I'll go to my end step, nothing resolves. Go to your turn. Okay. Yeah. This one taps. Ah, <laughs> uh, the end is nigh, guys. <laughs> yeah. If you can't I defend, was so confident. I was like, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna swoop in and destroy. Uh, so I'm gonna play yet another uh, oh I didn't draw. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna play yet another uh <laughs> land card. Uh and then I'm going to uh in hopes of protecting myself, I'm gonna <laughs> four, five, six. So I'm gonna tap these. I'm gonna play uh, oh, this he gets another counter. elemental. Two more counters. Uh, creature. Uh, I can't do anything with it, anything, because I don't have anything to five. attack with. Yeah. Uh, and I will pass, pass my turn. turn. My <laughs> turn. So he is now a eight, eight. Untap. Draw. I'm going to tap the witch's oven, sack the cat to create a food, deals you one damage. To you can bypass my creature, just me? Yeah, to the face. Right. And then sack the food, bring the cat back in, deals you another damage to the face. It gains me a life. <laughs> I sacked two things, making this a uh, 10 10 now. Oh boy. And I'll swoop in with a 10 10 and for my combat phase, and there you go. Gosh. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, uh, okay, well, that's fine. Dead. Cool. <laughs> it's good. Okay. It's, yeah, it's the end of the uh, game anyway. But yeah. Oh, it's the end. We only have two minutes left oh, anyway. Perfect. So, uh, sure. so we should do this again so that I can get better. Should. Uh, yeah. You know, Zamboni says he's not an expert, but like you guys can see this. This is our little table border here. These are all deck boxes. Th well, this one's mine. This, this, <laughs> this one, this just, just this one, is mine. All the rest of these are his. And so uh, the game has a lot of strategy and a lot of expertise. And obviously, when you play games with people, like there's added flavor. You know, we're grown adults, right? But you guys watching might not be grown adults. So you know, next time we play, we'll we'll, we'll make sure that you know we throw in some spicy text. But you know. PG spicy, spicy <laughs> text. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's Lex Play. I hope you guys come back again. Remember, we do this every Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. It could be a video game. It could be a tabletop game. Uh, we are still trying to work out how uh, best to play along with you guys, whether we're going to use Zoom or something. Uh, there's a little bit of a delay online, but we are working it out because we are technical people. We are <laughs> TV and radio people. I'm XP Hunter Lee of XP Hunter Radio Show and Podcast, and this is Zamboni Jones, one third. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm so glad you were here. It's a lot of fun today. It is a lot of fun. I mean, I don't usually enjoy getting beat. I'm a very competitive person, but I've tamped Grab it down. Grab some new decks. Just the here. Just experiment. <laughs> Anything I could say, just experiment with it. Mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. endless possibilities with the game. Just go out and have fun. Yeah. That's what I'm uh, remember, guys, uh, BNN, or Boston Neighbor Network, where we are recording this live right now, is a community access TV station. If you live in a city that has cable, you have community access. Support them. Do things. Connect with us. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Peace. <laughs>